First SEC loss, obviously you guys are disappointed. I'm disappointed. We uh, gave ourselves a chance there at the end to win it. You know, I didn't think played like we needed to in the first half. I uh, Somehow we got to get these guys ready to go a little bit better, better starts these Saturday morning games. But I give our guys a ton of credit. Uh, we were down 22 with 13 minutes to go in the game and had multiple opportunities to take the lead in the last minute, minute and a half of the game. So I couldn't ask for much better effort in the last 13 minutes. I think, you know, if we can get that type of effort for 40 minutes, we, we, we win the game. So, you know, we, we missed free throws early. I think maybe one out of our first five or seven, something like that. You know, we shoot 12 or 21 at the free throw line. We shoot 11 or 24 on, at the rim shots, you know, shoot 33% from the field and, you know, not a, uh, we just, uh, we, we, we got to play better. That's bottom line. They're, they're a really good team. I want to give Co Coach Moore, these guys ready to go this morning. They, they came out of the gate ready. We have to do a better job getting our guys ready to go out of the gate. But that, you know, there's a reason Missouri's in second place. I mean, they're right behind us. Now, now we're in a dog fight for the league title. They've got the, uh, tiebreaker and we, we've got our hands full for these last uh, seven games here. So we uh, we got to play a lot better on Tuesday against South Carolina than we did. We got to start the game a lot better for sure. Thanks, Coach. Uh, we'll start with Cecil Hart. Um, Coach, on the possessions in the in the final minute, uh, both times, you know, it looked like Herb just missed a, missed a layup on the first one. And then um, on the second one, where, where the shot got blocked, what did you see from your vantage point? I mean, I, you know, I haven't had a chance to look at it on film, so I don't want to say, but I thought the kid landed on his back. I, you know, I, I thought I, I haven't seen it. So I saw it live. I thought it was a foul live. Obviously, though, when you're coaching, you're hoping all the calls go your way as a coach, and sometimes they don't. I'll say this, like, you know, it, I wish we hadn't put ourselves in the spot where it's going to come down to, you know, a whistle or not getting a whistle in the last five seconds. You know, it, it's tough on Herb. I mean, you know, he's in foul trouble most of the game, and he's got to learn how to play better with, you know, he had two fouls. And, you know, he reached down, he had an obvious foul on his third foul, and, you know, maybe a tough one on his fourth, he had a tough one on his second. But he's got, he's got to learn how to play with foul trouble and stay in the game better. You know, if he's in the game – a little longer, maybe he's a little more loose, warmed up. Maybe he finishes both those and maybe gets an and one on one of them or something. But yeah, I, I, it was a tough call to lose the game on. But uh, like I said, I haven't seen it, so I don't want to say for sure. I mean, our refs in the SEC are pretty good. You know, I, uh, nobody's perfect. If he missed it, he missed it. We got to do a better job not putting ourselves in a spot where it's in their hands at the uh, in the last ten seconds of the game. Mike Rodak. Nate, you mentioned some of the issues early uh, in the game and some of these early starts, whether it's Western Kentucky or Oklahoma. Um, just what do you think the common thread is between those games? And does that concern you at all? Just kind of looking forward to tournament games that might start earlier. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, we've – common thread is we're not ready to play in the first half. That's the common thread. And it cost us twice. It cost us at Oklahoma. It cost us here. It almost cost us at Auburn. It cost, well, shoot, it cost us three times, Western Kentucky. So – you know, I told our guys, like, ESPN wants us on. I mean, we're the best team in the SEC. They're, they're, we've got that slot 11 o'clock, so there's a reason we're playing at 11. Let's show the country what we're about, and we just we weren't ready to go. I, I, if I had the answer, I'd fix it. we got to probably talk to our seniors, talk to talk to the team, see if they got some answers. I mean, they're the ones that got to come out ready to go, so I'm open to any suggestions they would have. You know, we, we did shorten our – you know, we usually have shoot around the night before and shorten those significantly last night to try to make sure we were fresh. You know, I, I don't have an answer for it, but we, we got to figure it out because we're still in first place in the SEC. I guess is they're still going to want us to be playing on ESPN and we're going to have more games that are going to be earlier starts and we got to do a better job coming out ready to play. 11 o'clock tip. Go Scott Griffin next. Nate, sometimes in these deals, as you know, you you got a team like yours where anybody could score, anybody could defend. You might have a deal where a guy waits on others 
to kind of jumpstart the team somehow with a defensive stop or whatever, and then somebody does too much. Where's that balance that you're looking for kind of off Mike's question there with this four or five game stretch where everything's not clean? Well, I, I, I thought we didn't move the ball very well. We didn't play with good pace. We had six assists, 13 turnovers. So obviously guys are trying to do too much right now, turning us. Teams are guarding us in a way that they're not over helping though. So we got to have guys, I mean, shot 11 of 24 at the rim late, like, either shouldn't have taken those or you got to make one of the two. Like you're at the rim finishing percentage can't be under 50% and expect to win games against quality teams. So, you know, I, there's in a high, high level basketball, you know, sometimes, you know, when you've got shooters, it, sometimes it's easier to take a one shooter out, you know, they can not help. It feels like some teams are maybe doing that to petty tried to use them as a screener a little bit more, but we just, we, we didn't, I didn't think our other guys were getting downhill, attacking off it, making the right reads, especially in the first half. In the second half, the game got a lot more loose and opened up. We got Petty freed up a few times, just on some loose balls, driving kick stuff when, when they're scrambling because it got a lot more up and down there towards the end. But I, I got to figure out a way to get Petty more shots. We got to figure out a way to use him as, you know, as a great offensive threat, because he is, you know, Shaq's always pretty aggressive. You know, he, he hasn't shot the ball particularly well these last couple of games, but we need somebody to be aggressive. I think that's going to come. I don't think he's going to continue to shoot 33%. You know, he sh you know, he's one for seven, I believe, and now one for four from three. I, I think he's a really good shooter, and I think that'll kind of the law of averages will average out there pretty quick. Hopefully uh, he gets back going. And we really need to get Herb healthy, though, like, that's the one, like, you know, if they're going to try to stay locked on to Shaq and Petty, and we, we got to get Primo going again, you know, for him to play 20 minutes and not score. We got we to get him involved a little bit more. But, like, you know, Herb's got to be able to get downhill and finish. JQ's got to be able to get down downhill and finish. You know, JQ plays and got downhill a little bit there in the second half. We got to get him doing more for us earlier in the game. So, we, I, you know, I just – we got to drive the ball, make the right reads when the outcomes. All right, this will be the last question. Let's go to Tyler Barton. Hey, Coach. It, it looked like, you know, Jordan Bruner could have made a difference today, too, you know, if you, you had him healthy. Just how, how do you kind of fix going forward when you guys are playing more physical teams in the interior, uh, fixing, you know, I mean, getting outmatched in the paint like that? Well, there's nobody else that really looks like Jeremiah Tillman in this league. I mean, there's some good bigs, but nobody with quite his size. You know, I thought, I mean, if you look at, you know, Jawan and, Rojas, like, you know, we lose the game by three. Plus five when Juwan's in the game for 10 minutes. You know, Ro, we're even when he's in the game for almost 13 minutes. So, you know, those guys, are, I mean, Juwan played big against Kentucky, gave us great minutes. So, I don't, I don't think Tillman necessarily, you know, I mean, if you look at their scoring, I mean, Tillman ends up with nine and eight. That's a pretty good night, but. You know, the guys that killed us more were Drew Smith getting loose in the first half. You know, he had nine right out of the gate. And Mark Smith, you know, has 12. And Kobe Brown, who, you know, well over his average tonight is 13. You can't let guys like that get off, you know, when, when you know, and they they shot three for 20 from three. Like when they shoot it that poorly. So you got to be better on the offensive end. You got to be better at the other stuff to where you can beat a team when they have a really bad shooting night like that. And we just – we weren't sharp enough on the other stuff. But I'm not – I don't, I mean, look, if we had Bruner, he obviously he's going to help us. We, we were playing great. Our best basketball we were playing was right kind of when he went down. You know, if we can get him back in a couple weeks, I think he's going to help us a lot. He'd give us some depth. You know, Reese kind of get back in that role where he was really comfortable playing well. I mean, Reese had played really well these last two games, you know, for whatever reason, you know, he just – couldn't get a roll in tonight, but I, I thought he had given us great games the last two games. So, you know, I'm not overly concerned. We got to figure out how to win without Bruner these next couple of weeks until we can get him back. And, you know, even when he comes back, he's going to be out, have been out for a month and a half or so. So it's not like he's going to pick up right where he left off. So we, we got to figure out how to win with the guys we've got right now. And that, that's on us. All right. Thank you, coach.